It's time to learn how to from MultimediaDesigner.com. Today's lesson is how to import your company logo or your own personal logo into a PowerPoint presentation. The first file that we want to import is a JPEG file. Now, a JPEG file is an interchangeable file format for both Macintosh and PC. And a JPEG file stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group, who created this standard. Um, most of you know it as just JPG, but you might have also seen the extension JPEG. Both are JPEG files. Now, the first thing that I want to do is import that JPEG file. And that would be, of course, your logo. Now, most of you might have access to this type of file because of the internet. Uh, you might have a company website that has the logo on the company website as a JPEG file. And so you might take that from the internet, you might take that directly from your website and import that into a PowerPoint presentation. But in my opinion, this is probably the least favorite file for a logo for a PowerPoint presentation um, because there's so many limitations. The first limitation is that a JPEG file cannot have a transparent background. Your background either has to be a color, so it's either white, black, blue, red, any number of colors. The problem with that is, is that if you're putting that onto a PowerPoint presentation with a different color um, on the background of the PowerPoint presentation compared to your background of your logo, then it's just not going to look right. I mean, if you have a white background in your PowerPoint presentation, and your JPEG um, you know, logo has a white background on it as well, then I don't see that being an issue. But if you have a PowerPoint presentation, as I have the one up on the screen, that has a gradation, then that's where you run into some issues. So if I go up to Insert, and I hit Pictures, and I created a directory called logo, a folder, I can then import my JPEG logo. But when I import it, you'll see that it has a white background, a rectangle around my logo. Well, if I were to take that you know, logo and put it in the upper left-hand corner, I'm fine. There's no problem with that because now my PowerPoint presentation, the background's white as well. So I don't really see an issue, and that would work. But if I take that same logo and put it in the bottom right-hand corner, which, to be honest with you, most people are going to put their logo in the bottom right-hand corner. But if I do that, you'll see now I have that white box to contend with. Well, this just isn't going to work if you want to have a professional-looking presentation. Now, the next file I want to import is a PNG file. Now, a PNG file is an improvement and non-patent replacement for a GIF file, which is a graphics interchange format. It's kind of funny because I originally remember this file being called a GIF file, uh, which stood for Genographics Image File. A Genographics system was a computer system that was used to produce 35 millimeter slides. And when I started actually designing presentations, that's when I started. I started creating slides back in the early 90s. So somewhere along the line, what was a GIF file then became a GIF file. But a GIF file was only 256 colors, where the new PNG file is millions. And a PNG file just works great uh, if you have that for a PowerPoint presentation. Now I imported the, um, as you can see on the screen, I imported the JPEG file, 
but like I said before, you have to deal with the color background that would be behind the logo that you're importing. Well, with the PNG file, you can actually make your background transparent. So if I actually go up to Insert again and hit Pictures, I'll be able to import my uh, PNG file. If I cl click the logo and say Insert, you'll see that inserts with no background because the background's transparent. Now, the disadvantage of both a JPEG file and a PNG file is that both of them are raster images. What this means is if you start with a small logo, let's say 300 pixels wide, and you want to make a title screen, and you want to put your logo nice and big on that title uh, screen, the problem is, is that when you enlarge your small logo, it will start to fuzz out and it will pixelate as this one does a little bit if I enlarge it you'll see that it starts to kinda lose its uh, clarity I will be importing some other files to show you a way around that if you have access to those files but if you don't I would choose a PNG file over a JPEG file for multimedia or PowerPoint presentations the third file that I want to import is an EPS file and this stands for encapsulated postscript it's very common with people who use Adobe Illustrator or even Corel draw which is on a PC this um, type of file is a vector file and is very uh, very clean and it looks very um, professional and you can enlarge it and reduce it without losing any clarity at all um, but if you have this file and you don't have any of the other files uh, this is actually ideal to use in PowerPoint but there is some work involved in making it look clean so if I go into my PowerPoint and I go to insert again and I hit pictures I can go and cl click on my uh, multimedia designer logo which is an EPS file this time if I insert it you'll see that it inserts but it looks a little choppy um, because that's how that's actually how PowerPoint imports the file this is it's nothing to do with the logo or the clarity of it it just looks choppy but there is ways around this um, there are people out there that will actually just use this as they import it but again if you want a professional looking presentation you're gonna to want to clean it up so there's a little bit of steps involved what we want to do is we want to go to the home area of your PowerPoint presentation you click that by going to the upper left hand corner and hitting home you want to make sure the logo is highlighted and you want to go to arrange and ungroup what this does it takes the imported picture and it converts it to a Microsoft Office drawing object. By doing that, it cleans up the logo right away. But now we have another problem. Now there's a black rectangle line around the logo. Not sure why this happens, but it just does. Um, so it's again a PowerPoint thing. So we want to highlight the logo again go up to arrange and ungroup a second time we can then click on the rectangle the outline in our delete key and delete that little outline of a rectangle but we want to then go and highlight the logo and we want to group it back together okay because if we don't do that if we go to move the logo somewhere on the screen we're not moving the entire logo just one of the uh, separate objects one of the letters and you don't want to do that you want to move the whole thing now the last thing that we have to do if you look at the logo it kinda looks bold especially where you see the design presentations like a professional the little tagline there you want to actually highlight the logo you want to go to shape outline in the upper right hand corner 
and you want to say no outline, what that does, it gets rid of the bold because there actually is outlines around each individual element within that logo. So now we got rid of that. Now the logo is clean. The advantage of using a EPS file is that we can now enlarge this EPS file to the size of the other one, uh, which was the PNG file. And you can see now this logo is cleaner than the other one. Uh, if you enlarge this presentation full screen, or you're doing a presentation in at a meeting, this makes all the difference. Because once that's enlarged to a bigger size, you can really see the imperfections of the PNG file compared to the EPS. The last file that I will be importing is a Windows Meta file. You may also know it as a WMF. And this image file format was originally designed for Microsoft Windows, but um, the reason I recommend this file is because of its ease of use, um, its clarity, and its printing capabilities. So if we go up to Insert again and click Pictures and choose that WMF, we can then insert that into our PowerPoint presentation. It throws it in the middle there, so I'll bring it up. And you can see that there actually is no work involved in this. So the logo imports perfectly. I can then decrease it or enlarge it to any size, and it will be clean. I, won't ha I don't have to worry about it pixelating, getting fuzzy. Uh, and to be honest with you, if I, if I take the EPS that we imported earlier and I try to reduce it, I can actually change the proportions of it by grabbing it and reducing it. The problem with that, you don't want to kind of make your logo look out of proportion. So in order to reduce that without changing the proportions, you actually have to hold your shift key down and then reduce or enlarge it. That's actually a little hint there. Just hold your shift key down and you can reduce and enlarge the EPS file. But for the WMF, I can actually do that without holding the shift key. And it reduces and enlarge perfectly. Now, what are the advantages of using a WMF? One is that every Windows program should import a WMF. The other thing is, is that um, you can import it and you don't have to mess with it. it it's very user friendly. Um, the other thing is, is that you can um, enlarge it without it pixelating or getting fuzzy. And finally, it's printing capabilities. A lot of people worry so much about how the presentation looks, they forget about what it looks like when it prints. And to be honest with you, I mean, a lot of presenters will print out handouts for their audience. And you want to make sure that things look good on paper as well as they look on the screen. So if I go File and I go Print, now, if we were printing in color, we're fine with some of those other samples. But if I go to print grayscale, again, we're fine. But the, the uh, JPEG file and the PNG might be a little fuzzy, might pixelate. So it comes down to the EPS or the WMF. If I go to print pure black and white, let's say I just want to print pure black and white, especially if you're using a... Um, just a black and white laser printer okay and you just want to create handouts simple ones if I hit pure black and white now that's where you see the difference because the EPS file outlines and the WMF is still very clean looking and very professional looking but um, I hope you like today's lesson on how to add your company logo to a PowerPoint presentation thank you